Hello everyone. In this video, we will explore the various generations of Wi-Fi, the key factors that impact Wi-Fi quality, and the best practices for optimizing your Wi-Fi network. Due to more and more smartphones being introduced in late 1990s that fully rely on wireless connection. Wi-Fi standard first introduced by Wi-Fi Alliance to name as IEEE 802.11 standard. The first generation of the Wi-Fi standard, known as 802.11b, was introduced in 1999. It operated at a transmission rate of 11 Mbps on the 2.4 GHz channel. In the same year, 1999, the 5.0 GHz channel was introduced with the 802.11a, boasting a transmission rate of 54 Mbps, this standard later known as Wi-Fi 2. We will discuss the choice between 2.4 GHz and 5.0 GHz frequency later in the video. Wi-Fi 3 introduced in year 2003 as 802.11G, operated at 2.4 GHz but offered a larger bandwidth and supported a transmission rate of 54 Mbps. This upgrade aimed to replace the first generation Wi-Fi 1, which also used the 2.4 GHz frequency. The most popular Wi-Fi standard, which is still widely used today, is Wi-Fi 4. It designated as 802.11n. Wi-Fi 4 was the first wireless standard to combine 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz technologies, replacing both the 802.11a and 802.11g standards. It offered a significant improvement, with 10 times increase in bandwidth throughput compared to previous Wi-Fi standards achieving speeds of up to 600 Mbps. This enhancement made it particularly well-suited for the increasingly popular applications of audio and video streaming during that time. Wi-Fi 5, known as 802.11ac, it was primarily designed for corporate use and could reach speeds on par with data centers, offering up to 6.9 Gbps. This standard was launched in year 2014 and operated exclusively in the 5 GHz frequency range to minimize channel interference. Wi-Fi 6, also known as 802.11ax, currently the most common Wi-Fi standard in use. It supports speeds close to 10 Gbps and was introduced in year 2019. In year 2021, Wi-Fi 6E was introduced as an enhanced version, supporting the 6 GHz frequency range to enable more channels, delivering ultimate Wi-Fi performance with higher throughput and eliminating signal interference. This enhanced Wi-Fi 6E technology is particularly suitable for enterprise applications such as video streaming and video conferencing. For Wi-Fi 6, it is recommended to use a 10 Gbps SFP or copper module in the access point to connect to the internet router or firewall in order to match the full throughput transmission. Wi-Fi 7, also known as IEEE 802.11b, it is the upcoming Wi-Fi standard that operates across all three bands, 2.4, 5, and 6 GHz, similar to the Wi-Fi 6C channel frequency design. It is expected to be launched in year 2024 and introduces a groundbreaking 320 MHz channel size, doubling the channel size from Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 7 is projected to provide speeds 4.8 times faster than Wi-Fi 6 and a remarkable 13 times faster than Wi-Fi 5 with a maximum throughput capability of up to 46 Gbps. To fully leverage this enhanced performance, it is recommended to use a 40 Gbps fiber module in the access point when connecting to the internet router or firewall. Two primary factors significantly influence the quality of a Wi-Fi connection, signal strength, and Wi-Fi interference. A lower Wi-Fi signal strength often leads to a slower connection speed. For instance, if you see only one or two bars out of five on your Wi-Fi indicator, it indicates a connection with lower bandwidth, resulting in reduced internet download speeds. Several criteria can contribute to weak Wi-Fi signals. One common issue is when Wi-Fi endpoints are positioned at a significant distance from the access point. However, in some cases, even when you are close to the access point, 
your signal strength may still be low. Wi-Fi signals are essentially radio waves, and certain materials can easily absorb these signals, such as metal, water, and brick walls. For instance, having a brick wall or a metal door can cause a significant drop in your Wi-Fi signal strength. For optimal signal coverage, it's recommended to install the access point on the ceiling with the antenna facing downward. This placement strategy enhances signal coverage. Avoid placing the access point on a table with the antenna pointing upward, as metal can absorb the signals, resulting in weaker coverage. Another method to extend your signal coverage is by using Wi-Fi antennas with higher DBI ratings for stronger signal transmission. Understanding these principles can help you design and optimize your Wi-Fi network for better quality and performance. The second factor related to Wi-Fi quality concerns is Wi-Fi interference. Unlike the first factor, which deals with signal strength, interference primarily affects signal stability. To illustrate this, imagine you're speaking, and there are some people sitting far behind you. This scenario resembles the first factor where the signal is weak. However, when it comes to Wi-Fi interference, it's as if people are sitting right in front of you but there is noise and disruption while you are speaking. This interference can lead to signal drops, making it challenging for the audience to receive your message clearly. In the context of Wi-Fi, interference results in packet loss during data transmission. This interference is often caused by devices operating on the same channel frequency, leading to overlapping signals and disruptions in the Wi-Fi network. This is indeed a crucial discussion, particularly regarding the frequency bands used in Wi-Fi networks. Let's delve into the details of the different frequency bands and their implications. In the past, the 2.4 GHz frequency band was the primary choice for Wi-Fi. It offers a longer signal range, but has the drawback of only supporting three non-overlapping channels, typically set to channels 1, 6, and 11. This limitation often led to interference issues, as many devices, us, such as Bluetooth, cordless phones, and microwaves also use the 2.4 GHz band. To address the interference and traffic drops associated with the 2.4 GHz band, the 5 GHz band became widely adopted. It offers more than 20 non-overlapping channels, which enables higher data transfer speeds and better interference control. This makes the 5 GHz band a preferred choice, especially in corporate Wi-Fi environments. The introduction of the 6 GHz band provides an additional 1200 MHz of bandwidth beyond the 5 GHz band. This extra bandwidth is particularly useful for achieving higher throughput in Wi-Fi networks. It allows for the concept of channel width, where multiple channels can be combined to increase the transmission bandwidth. For example, in the 5 GHz band, you can combine channels to create 160 MHz wide channels for bigger throughput transmission, but this leads to a reduction to only two non-overlapping channels. In contrast, the 6 GHz frequency band can support up to 7 non-overlapping channels. This makes it an excellent choice for future Wi-Fi standards like Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7, where 6 GHz channels can be efficiently utilized to deliver high-performance Wi-Fi. In summary, the 2.4 GHz band offers longer range but limited non-overlapping channels, leading to increased interference. The 5 GHz band provides more non-overlapping channels and is commonly used in corporate settings. The 6 GHz band offers even more bandwidth and non-overlapping channels, making it a promising choice for advanced Wi-Fi standards and high-speed, interference-free wireless networks. If you enjoy this video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.